committee, we're going to shift gears for a couple of minutes to talk about the MOU that we were talking about a week or so ago. And um, I do understand there has been some progress and conversation. Pat Gable, I see, is joining us. Um, she had asked to be part of the conversation. Pat, I don't know what uh, time you actually signed on to this Zoom conference, but if um, you were listening to the tail end of that story, you would have heard the story of a, a black man who had been in the Revolutionary War and had to go three years to try to get his pension in the Vermont court system. I didn't want you to come away thinking that that's, that's normal for the course for us in the court system right now. I'm sorry I missed that story. <laughs> it was a great story. It really was. Um, I don't want to uh, belabor this or spend a whole lot of time this afternoon if it's not necessary, but Pat, this is your first time here. I didn't know whether you wanted to weigh into the conversation. I do understand that uh, Commissioner Fitch and Sergeant at Arms Miller have both been communicating with each other and that the court system is the third leg on that stool, if you will, for completing this MOU. And I don't know whether you've had conversation with the two of them or not, but I was gonna at least give you the opportunity to say what you know and what you'd like to see happen. So I know what the last MOU <laughs> says. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I also, um, I'm also very aware uh, how important it is that the Sergeant at Arms and the Commissioner and I uh, have a good collaborative understanding of how to work together um, on capital conflict security. So I'm not aware of any particular issues uh, that have come up other than understanding that it may be time to renew the MOU and you know the there are certain environmental issues. Uh, I don't mean uh, environment environmental issues, but certain circumstances that um, you know have arisen lately where we want to pay close attention. So I think the one point I would make before stepping back and letting others more knowledgeable about the recent discussions go forward is that I think um, our um, the people who report to us in security have a pretty good working relationship and I think are um, providing uh, good support to us. I, I know I would have appreciated uh, maybe having uh, one or two leadership uh, updates uh, a few weeks ago in terms of what circumstances were. And so that would be the one issue is remembering that um, uh, it would be important. For, for example, I'm a, I have a statutory responsibility for the security of all the courts in the state. And so I just want to make sure that I have enough information and enough updates so that I can exercise that responsibility. But I have uh, always appreciated the collaboration with the Sergeant of Arms and the Commissioner and uh, look forward to what issues may come up that may require changes in the MOU. Pat, I didn't ask you to identify yourself when you began. So perhaps we ought to do that just to make it formal. Okay. So I'm Patricia Gable and I'm the Vermont State Court Administrator. And I say hello to all the members of the committee. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Jennifer Fitz, Janet Miller, I don't know which one of you would like to go next. I'm happy to have uh, Janet go next. She was probably going to say the same thing about you. Yeah, either way is fine. So I, uh, good afternoon. So Janet Miller, Sergeant in Arms here at the Vermont State House. Uh, so Jennifer and I did have a conversation the other day, um, and I think Jennifer had sent out an email to Pat and I as well. But I think the place that we landed, and Jennifer, just chip in any time that you want. But you were going, Jennifer was going to take a stab at putting her changes into the existing MOU, and then kind of pass it, maybe check it out with people she needs to check it out with and then pass it along and then we could add something. Or if we had something just to put it in, we just have to have a starting place of somebody to look at this MOU. So I'm fine and I, Pat, I won't speak for you, Pat, but um, that if some, Jennifer, you just want to start that process, I'm good with that. And I, the other thing I would like to add is that when Jennifer and I had spoken, um, we thought one of the little bit of a stumbling block was going to be 
when does the event plan turn into a regular, from a regular event over to a law enforcement? Or like, how can that be put into the MOU? Jennifer, am I correct in, in what we discussed? Right, that is that is correct. So, uh, Senator uh, Benning, my name is Jennifer Fitch. I am the BGS Commissioner for the record. Uh, thank you for inviting me here today. Um, just to give everybody uh, every everything that Pat and Janet has said is true, which is um, I actually called both of them last week and had a short conversation, letting them both know that we were going to be revisiting the MOU. And I did follow up with an email on Friday, um, basically just reinforcing what I had said to both of them over the phone. Um, and I also had an internal meeting this week um, with our legal counsel, as well as Bill McSalis, who is our director of the Office of State Safety and Security. Um, and so, yes, all of that is true. And we are advancing as quickly as we can. After reflecting from our meeting last week and learning about mutual aid, right, I'm a new commissioner, so I'm learning these things as I go. Um, and then rereading the, the 2016 MOU, it, what it clearly does is it clearly redefines our jurisdiction in terms of um, judicial branch has jurisdiction within their courthouses. The Sergeant of Arm, at Arms, excuse me, Janet, has jurisdiction within the state house. And then the BGS commissioner has jurisdiction in uh, state owned buildings that's underneath the jurisdiction of BGS, um, as well as all grounds. And so it sort of reinforces the statutory authority of the, the three of us. And then it also discusses that the sergeant at arms um, uh, has the authority to basically act on my steed, if you will, and that is to reinforce uh, state facility rules. So I have a number of state facility rules that BGS has established. And through that MOU in 2016, it basically says that the sergeant at arms um, may, may reinforce those rules on the state house lawn. It also mentions mutual aid, which is a lot of the discussion last week, which is to say, that if anything happens on the state house lawn that requires law enforcement to, to take action, um, whatever law enforcement is the one that's closest to the scene and can arrive and, and aid uh, the BGS commissioner um, shall do so as quickly as possible. And so for me, whether that whether that's the Sergeant at Arms or the Montpelier Police Department, or let's say we had guards um, working for the judicial branch that could respond right away, then that would be great. And that's basically what the MOU says. The other thing that it notes is that we will, and this is where I think we really should spend a lot of our time, which is it talks about having you know communication plans and it talks about developing plans in general. And to me, kind of reflecting on the last four years in, in BGS, I think that's really the area where we have the most opportunity to improve because I can't speak on behalf of the prior BGS commissioner and he definitely, um, led sort of the safety and security component. But being a casual observer in the background, I don't remember or recall many meetings between um, Patricia Gable as the court administrator or Janet Miller as the sergeant at arms. And one of the things that Bill and I talked about that we think is a real opportunity is to do just that and that we should be meeting periodically and that we should develop a communication plan and that we should be talking about how we plan um, for events, whether they're planned or unplanned. And so there's definitely a lot of opportunity for us to work much more closely and collaboratively together. And I'm dedicated and committed to doing that. So, um, so in terms of reflecting on the MOU, from my perspective, it contains sort of all the aspects that I would be hoping to have within the MOU from, from my perspective. Um, I just wanna add a little bit more in there around um, communication but other than, and notification and concurrence. But other than that, which is just a very minor modification, um, which I plan to make this week, hopefully, and get it to folks next week, that would really be the only um, aspect that I would recommend changing at this time. In addition to, like I said, outside the MOU, really focus on that coordination and that communication and that planning and, and coordinating and working together. The thing that I am concerned about, about putting too many fine details into the MOU itself is that it constricts our ability, right? Whatever we put in there is sort of what I would call more rigid versus us working together outside of the MOU is much more flexible, which means we can be a lot more dynamic, right? And we can modify our plans as needed to address whatever may be occurring at the time. So, um, so we are very actively working on it. We're dedicated and I am committed to working with both Patricia and Janet, both on the MOU, but I think there's a lot of work and, and coordination to be done outside of the MOU as well. Okay, I appreciate hearing all this and I obviously believe all of you are perfectly capable and competent in moving forward 
let me just tell you that the reason we're having this discussion right now is the MOU itself was launched through statute. Um, and part of the legislative responsibility is to have this uh, committee known as the Capital Complex Security Committee, which is technically involved in this discussion anyway. I don't wanna use the institutions committee as some kind of a barrier to you being able to uh, hammer this out. Just the opposite, in fact, I wanna be able to use this committee as a conduit for further conversation if you feel it would be necessary. And we also have access to really good legislative counsel in the event that uh, some tweaks of an MOU that you're not quite understanding uh, might be able to be resolved with legislative counsel chipping in with whoever the counsel is that you're hiring around the table. And that's not to insult anybody. We just happen to have a group that handles uh, drafting things like that a lot, so there's some experience there if you need it. Our committee is gonna get a lot busier after the 19th of March. Um, that's crossover date for the Capitol bill to come into our uh, room. And so we're gonna be really occupied after that, but I'm gonna hold open the week uh, of March 9th, just in case you need to have any further discussion or wanna flesh something out. Um, I'll leave a spot there available in case you do, but. I'll just keep my fingers crossed from here that everybody's um, talking and able to finish up a product. Anybody have anything else, questions, comments, or whatever? Okay. I think that means you're all free to go. Have a great day. And thank, thank you, very you very much, much once again. Thank you very much. Thank you.